Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. One of the things I wish people would understand is that their vision and what they desire with a firearm may not align with the manufacturers and the analytics and sales patterns that they have information about. Let me give you an example. Car Arms, they make the small, subcompact, single stack 940s and 45s. This is a PM9. Their most popular selling handgun is right here, the car PM9. I've owned it for years. I hear people all the time say, well, is Car Arms even relevant anymore? Are they selling anything because of the popularity of the double stack 9mm? Do they even exist? How are they not bankrupt by now? Let me tell you something. Car Arms the last five years has been killing it with sales. They sell thousands and thousands of guns, and yet we have no idea because we think what is the latest craze on YouTube or what their neighbor's talking about or whatever is, is mainstream throughout the gun world, and that simply isn't true. And without having those analytics of what the company sees, we really don't know. It's almost like going into a 7-Eleven and buying a Slurpee and saying, I know what it takes to operate the, the whole company, and we really don't. These are selling, and people say, why don't they come out with a double stack? Well, they are coming out with a double stack. I get asked every day, when is that going to happen? It's coming very soon. That's the inside information I have, and that's the best I could do with that. Another thing is 10 millimeter. People say, if Taurus would just make a 10 millimeter, I would be all over it. People love Taurus because they're budget friendly and they work really well. But what does Taurus do? They regurgitate the same gun that's already out there that has shown a track record of success. You look at the G3C and then the G3XL and then the G3 and then the, the GX4 XL and the GX4 carry and the G3 full size, the G3 tactical. They, they take the same pattern handgun and make the barrel a little bit longer, make the grip a little longer with mags with higher capacity. They are selling very, very well. Why would they come out with a 10 millimeter when, when you have to add additional strength of the parts to withstand the pressure of the 10 millimeter? It just doesn't quite add up. 10 millimeter had its surge about five to six years ago. It was like surging. You saw every manufacturer come out with 10 millimeter. Is it still as popular? I tend to think not, but I don't have the inside analytics either. But you don't see many new ones coming out these days. You have the analytics from Springfield Armory and Smith & Wesson and Ruger all trying to figure this whole thing out. They don't always align with each other. The numbers are different. Nobody knows their customer base better than they do. Here's another example. Double stack 1911s in 9mm. People say if they made one under a grand, I would be all over it. Why would a company make it for under a grand when they're selling one after another for $2,500. You look at Staccato, $2,500 to $3,500. And from all intents and purposes, their sales are booming. This is $1,760. People said, I would love to have that, but it's, it's too much money. Well, too much money is subjective. It all depends on people's finances. The double stack 1911s and 9mm is the hottest thing by far in the gun world. They have been for over a year. You're starting to see these companies pop up one after another, some of which you ne you've never heard of before, but they're coming out with their best product of a double stack 1911 or 2011. 2011 is a staccato thing, by the way. It's not a one size fits all. Same, same pattern handgun. They're selling like crazy one after another. Why are they selling? Who actually would be in the market for some something like this? Anybody that likes a low recoil, very accurate, higher capacity handgun that's optic ready, that feels like a 22. I get some satisfaction out of a shoot, shooting a 22 when I can ring steel with very little recoil. I get more satisfaction out of shooting this bull tack four and a quarter because it's a heavier round, but it doesn't necessarily feel that much heavier in a big handgun like this. That is 
the craze. Let me tell you something. That is the craze to say, well, if they would sell it for less, we don't know what they need back in return. We don't know the, the research, the development, the cost, the production, the labor, and the rest of the overhead to put something like that together to say, well, I want one for under a grand. Well, some of those are coming out now for, for under a grand. Is it going to be of the same quality? It typically isn't. And that's the reason why it's under a grand. So we'll see what the, the future holds. The rifles have gone through incredible uh, highs and lows. Sometimes they're in the valley and other times they're up on the mountain. In 2012, they're up in the, on the top of the mountain. You couldn't pick up an AR for under a grand. Now you can get it for 600 bucks. No problem. You see all these other companies that you never heard of making these ARs. Parts are cheap. Labor is not too intense putting those together. Parts are available and you can do it rather quickly. So what do they do? They come out with different variations, different Cerakotes, things like that. The rifle world is really interesting. Most people own a rifle and they're good with it. They, they're no longer in the market for that. Unlike in 2012 when everybody who thought they should get one before the government bans it needs to get one and you had people waiting in line to, to get one only to find out that the person in front of you just bought the last one. So we don't have the inside analytics to speculate on that. Could be a, a waste of time and memory space because we don't know their sales patterns and we don't know what they're going through. Do I feel bad for them? Do I shed a tear? No, not at all. They're going to do what they're going to do and we're going to buy what we're going to buy. And when all that adds up, that will dictate the next firearm they produce. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.